All right. W.C. Turk here for Revolution and Beer at revolutionandbeer.com, the podcast on the Memorial Bridge in Washington, D.C. Uh, right behind me is Arlington National Cemetery. You can see there's a lot of security here, um, some heavy-duty security. Uh, apparently, they were waiting for Mr. Kokesh and his, um, as, of, as of yesterday on Facebook, 6,500 supporters. Um, catch everybody up. They were supposed to march across this bridge uh, with uh, weapons, loaded weapons slung across their back. And uh, you can't see behind me, but there is a, uh, a notable absence of um, Kokesh and armed supporters. Um, if I had to estimate the, uh, the size of that crowd, I would estimate, oh, Zero. Revolution and beer was here. See the park is starting to fill up here a little bit. Uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of quick things for the podcast uh, while we're here. Um, we're going to stay on, on scene for a little while just to make sure um, if their alarm went off late, if they, uh, you know, if they overslept, if they had trouble finding a ride, uh, maybe if, if their mom um, was busy with uh, grocery shopping and, and couldn't get here, uh, couldn't get them here on time. So a couple of things we're going to be looking at. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about here while we're, uh, while we're awaiting the, um, the coming revolution, which don't seem to be coming too fast right now, at least at least how they uh, they defined it. <clears throat> but I wanted to talk about um, the meaning and value of revolution. We're called revolution in beer. Our idea of revolution is that peaceful, sustained action by people, uh, kind of like what we saw with Occupy. Um, definitely what we saw. In, uh, in Egypt this past week, the last couple of weeks, and absolutely what we saw at the Apple Store the other day, uh, where people take responsibility, they take charge, uh, they take interest in what's going on in the nation around them, and they make things happen. And that doesn't come at a point of a gun. Those kind of revolutions never last. And they're never real anyways. Historically, if you look at revolutions, every revolution, they're ultimately co-opted. <coughs> they're co-opted by themselves. They're co-opted by an underlying structure to a society. Um, the, best, the best revolutions are the peaceful ones. So when I when I talk about the value of revolution, a revolution has to it it has to have some some sort of value. There has to be an end game to it. You know, we heard we heard during the the Iran and Iraq wars, uh, the Iraq and, and Afghanistan wars. Excuse me. Um, what's our end strategy? What's our end game? Going into Libya. What's the end game? Going into Bosnia. What's the end game? Funny how how Kokesh, who um, still hasn't quite made it. Um, and his folks seem to have forgotten um, those lessons. What's the end game? We said in the last couple of pieces ago, I was talking about Albert Einstein, the power of one, the founding fathers. We talked about that a little bit. And again, the founding fathers, so to speak, were just men who, in those early in those earliest days of this nation, left a lot of voices out. And that's what revolution is about, really. It should be about the inclusion of voices that have been left out of the of the national, and the international, and, and human conversation. 
and they left out women, blacks, immigrants, <coughs> indigenous Americans in particular. You know, we've seen over the years, we've seen progress. We haven't seen ultimate progress. Ultimate progress would be a planet-wide realization of those re very real and basic human rights, which has definitely not been realized. One of our programs, you can find at revolutioninbeer.com. We talked with some local feminists in Chicago and posed the question, has there really been any progress in women's rights? Because if you ask that question, you can't narrow it to just the United States, in which issue still, still remain. The sexual assault issue in, in, in the military currently. There's a lot of issues that remain. Birth control issue the abortion issue, choice issue, health care issue, things that are, are particular to, to women. But if we, look, if we look around the planet, there has been relatively in the last 5,000 years, and this shocked me, there's been relatively little progress towards women's rights. So we have to ask ourselves, what is, what's the value of a revolution? What is the end game? What do we want to, to achieve? What do we want to attain, both short, short term and long term? An armed revolution is a fraud. It accomplishes nothing. Some violence, a few people may be benefiting. I know in Bosnia, it was the honest people that fought and died primarily. And in the aftermath of that war, they were exhausted. They were exhausted financially. You know, there was no business. Businesses were destroyed. Lives were destroyed. Lives were upended. People were populations were shifted around as refugees or as part of a genocide. <clears throat> the people that prevailed were the most ruthless and the greediest, which has now led to a very dysfunctional society there. We also talked about Egypt yesterday and the value of revolution definition of it and that every time there's a new government there's a new constitution well, who does that constitution favor does it favor the winner it, it would seem so so if we're if we're listening to the to the cartoon pundits here and in, in, and uh, oh no still not here the cartoon pundits in this country Are they, are they gonna, going to define the course of this nation? It seems very dangerous, very subjective. At least with the Constitution, we have that we the people part. We have that Bill of Rights if we choose to fight for it. It's up to us to define the nation. It's up to us to define the nation as we find it, as we come to it. But with, with a foundation in those, in those original documents, those original documents that were written on paper by men. They weren't written in stone by God. I think that's an important lesson for us to remember. The nation is ours to define as we find it. Let's build on that foundation.
I don't know if I'm relieved or not that they didn't show. I think I'm a little, a little disappointed. My my feeling was I I was going to fight for a conversation, a national dialogue here. Revolution in beer was there for that that opportunity. Adam Kokesh and his supposed 6,000 followers seem to have squandered, at least for now, that opportunity. So it's a little, it's a little strange. I have mixed feelings about it. But I think, I'm not going to say revolution in beer one this one, that we didn't. The conversation continues. We're still going to press for that conversation. But the side that really needs to be engaged in that conversation didn't show. And that's on that. For Revolution in Beer, this is WC Turk. Next time.